Today we are looking into one of the prehistoric sea's scariest predators, a super crocodile. Wait, fish, no, dinosaur, uh, whatever. I'll just let you decide for yourself once you're done watching this video. For now, just know that it was twice the size of Shaq. Duckasaurus were fearsome predators that lived during the late Jurassic period, around 152 to 157 million years ago. These prehistoric reptiles were members of the family Metriorhynchidae. Now this family was made up of marine crocodilomorphs that were complete water babies and never left the ocean. While it wasn't nearly as well known as some marine reptiles of the time, like plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, Duckasaurus was a pretty scary freaking predator in its own right. With that streamlined body and powerful flippers, it could easily swim through the water and devour huge prey like sharks in one go. So far, we've found two Duckasaurus species. Duckasaurus maximus, living out in the seas covering Europe during the late Jurassic, and Duckasaurus andionesis, who lived in what's now Argentina during the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous. Oh, and there might be a third Duckasaurus species in Mexico from the late Jurassic. Some other Metrioninchus used to be thought of as Duckasaurus species, but now they've got their own names, Plesiosuchus and Torvanistus. So what did the Duckasaurus look like? Well, this might freak you out a little bit, but bear with me. Imagine a creature that looks like a mix between a crocodile and a fish. At first glance, it might seem like a crocodile, but take a closer look and you'll notice its shark-like tail fluke and flippers. That's Duckasaurus, a unique crocodiliomorph with serrated teeth, and it was most definitely a reptile that loved the open ocean. Honestly, it's a pretty fascinating combo of traits. Even though Dacosaurus is part of the crocodiliomorph family, it looks more like a fish than a typical crocodile, but it does share some similarities with modern crocodiles. For one, they both have big skulls and long bodies. But Dacosaurus has a shorter, taller snout, serrated teeth, and a slightly different body shape compared to your regular crocodile. These features make it stand out among other marine reptiles, which usually have long snouts and sharp teeth for catching fish. But if you want to know what really makes it stand out from its modern crocodile cousins, this one's it. Instead of regular limbs, Duckasaurus evolved flippers, turning them into speedy swimmers. They had tall dorsal fins and fluke tails, both working together to propel these amazing creatures through the water. But that's not all that's different. While your typical crocodile has tough, armored skin with thick scales, Duckasaurus had the smooth and scaleless look. Yes, they were pretty sleek. In terms of size, Duckasaurus was no small fry. Estimates put it at 4 to 5 meters, 13 to 16.4 feet in length, which is twice the size of not just Shaq, but also Andre the Giant. It weighed in at around 200 to 275 kilograms, 441 to 606 pounds. Pretty darn hefty, in it. But if we check out other members of Dacosaurus's gang, the Geosaurini, we find that it wasn't the only big marine crocodile swimming in the late Jurassic waters. In fact, it seems like there was a bit of a size trend going on between them. Take Torvanistus, for example. It's about the same size as Dacosaurus, measuring 4 to 4.7 meters, 13 to 15.4 feet in length, and tipping the scales at 275 kilograms, 606 pounds. But it had a longer snout and smaller teeth compared to Dacosaurus. Then there's Tyrannonistus, keeping it in the family with a length of roughly 4 to 5 meters, 15 to 16.5 feet. It's like the sibling that's right there in size. Not too big, not too small. And finally, the smallest one among them is Geosaurus, measuring just 2.5 to 3 meters, 8.2 to 9.8 feet long, and weighing in at 80 kilograms, 176 pounds. While crocodiles today are mostly semi-aquatic, living in freshwater environments like wetlands and rivers, some do venture into brackish or saltwater. Dacosaurus, however, was a different story. It likely embraced a fully aquatic lifestyle, navigating the ancient seas with its flipper-like limbs and shark-like tail fluke. Scientists believe it couldn't move on land at all, which meant it likely spent its entire life submerged. Apart from that, Crocodiles have sharp teeth for piercing and holding prey, but Dacosaurus had a different set, Letiria medially compressed serrated teeth, 
this tooth structure efficiently cut through large prey, letting Dacosaurus easily tear flesh, unlike crocodilians that use a death roll. Interestingly, this tearing lizard had the largest but fewest teeth among metriorhynchids. But then again, that's typical of a species adapted to regularly prey on large animals. Research has revealed that Dacosaurus may actually have been the world's first suction predator. It probably had a jaw mechanism creating pressure inside that literally sucked prey in whole. This unique combination of features led scientists to nickname Dacosaurus a mix of killer whale and Tyrannosaurus. Now, what was on the menu for this incredible creature? The answer is sharks, and lots of them. Another thing about Dacosaurus is that they had skull chambers that looked like extra nostrils, but they were far from being that. These chambers actually housed salt glands, responsible for secreting excess salt. For Dacosaurus, living entirely in salt water, these salt glands were crucial for its survival. Now, modern crocodiles also have salt glands, but theirs are smaller and located on their tongues. However, it's doubtful that Dacosaurus and crocodiles inherited their salt glands from a common ancestor, mainly because the first members of their groups lived in freshwater. In fact, it's a bit of a mystery whether Metriorhynchids and their branch of Crocodylomorpha, Thalatosuchia, share a semi-aquatic ancestor with crocodiles. They might have independently evolved their love for water and some crocodilian-like traits separate from the terrestrial Crocodylomorph lineage. What do you think? Man, we've got to talk about their skulls next. These guys had a unique skull compared to other Metriorhynchids. While most had long, low skulls for quick underwater movement, Dacosaurus had a shorter, wider, and taller skull, giving it a dinosaur-like appearance, especially in Dacosaurus andienensis, which is actually nicknamed Godzilla. However, the skull of Dacosaurus maximus was in between Dacosaurus andienensis and typical Metriorhynchids. This deep skull allowed for a powerful bite but created more drag, explaining its rarity among marine predators. Now, the life cycle of fully aquatic reptiles like Dacosaurus is pretty hard to crack, and here's why I say that. Typically, reptiles reproduce sexually by laying eggs, a process that involves leaving the water. So, how did they reproduce? Well, scientists think Dacosaurus might have evolved to be viviparous, meaning it gave birth to live babies. They compare it to ichthyosaurs, which also gave live birth. Another reptile, Kykosaurus, might have been oviviparous, where the eggs formed inside until ready to hatch. But Dacosaurus probably didn't lay eggs on land. Fossils show a pregnant Dacosaurus mom giving birth to a baby with small paddle-like limbs, just like adults. This strongly suggests live birth. No nesting sites for Dacosaurus have been found, supporting the idea that they gave birth to live young. Still, we're not sure how long they were pregnant, how fast the babies grew, or if the parents took care of them, so there's a lot left to discover. But for now, let's talk about the things we do know, like their interactions with other species. When it comes to the aquatic world, the competition and prey of the formidable Dacosaurus depended on the specific sea in question. The paleofauna in Europe differed from that in South America. In Europe, Dacosaurus likely shared its aquatic home with fellow predators, such as Geosaurus giganteus, Cricosaurus suvicus, and Rachiosaurus gracilis. The survival strategy for this diverse group of predators was niche partitioning, where each species evolved to utilize its environment in a way that allowed coexistence and prevented the extinction of competing species. For instance, Cricosaurus suvicus and Rachiosaurus gracilis with their elongated snouts, were likely specialized in feeding on fish. Rachiosaurus might have targeted smaller fish, while Cricosaurus suvicus could have been a more versatile feeder. On the other hand, Steniosaurus, another crocodile form in the mix, might have been a slower swimmer, relying on ambushing prey. This niche partitioning extended to the two top predators, Dacosaurus and Geosaurus. Their teeth revealed different capturing techniques and probably different prey preferences. Dacosaurus had large, serrated teeth, while Geosaurus had blade-like teeth. The exact prey these predators went after remains unknown, but the European shallow seas were teeming with fish and marine creatures. Fossil evidence from the Vaca Muerta formation in South America, particularly in Argentina, 
also points to niche partitioning. Cricosaurus and Geosaurus fossils were found, indicating a similar coexistence strategy. Another South American metrioninchid, Puranosaurus, adds to the mix, although its ecological niche remains poorly studied. Argentinian waters were likely rich in ichthyosaurs, pterosaurs, and reptiles. Interestingly, Duckosaurus is often depicted in pursuit of an ichthyosaur called Capulosaurus, suggesting it might have been one of its potential prey items. Now, brace yourself if you're a rookie, because this discussion's about to get a little technical and overwhelming. This is how the Duckosaurus evolved. So this guy is classified as a Metrioninchid Thalatosuchian, right? And Thalatosuchians likely originated in the early Jurassic, with the earliest known remains dating back to the Sinumerian stage discovered in Chile and France. However, the officially recognized earliest members of the Thalatosuchia suborder are Ternosuchus reptiles, from the Pleansbachian stage of the early Jurassic. Ternosuchus already had somewhat elongated jaws, and its successor's jaws became even more elongated, with some characteristics considered ancestral traits of the Teleosauridae and Metrioninchidae groups. Despite these insights, the evolution of Metrioninchid crocodilians is poorly understood due to limited studies, taxonomic challenges, and a lack of complete skeletons. However, it is confirmed that the evolution of Metrioninchidae led to highly diverse reptiles in terms of form, biodiversity, and function, likely reaching its peak before the Jurassic Cretaceous boundary. Turning to the history of Dacosaurus's discovery, the journey takes us back to the 19th century in Germany, where the first fossils were initially thought to belong to Megalosaurus, a theropod dinosaur. Later, they were named Geosaurus maximus, before being attributed to the new genus Dacosaurus. In 1871, additional fossils were mistakenly linked to Megalosaurus, and named Megalosaurus skenathemi by Emanuel Bunzel. These fossils are now believed to be from a Dacosaurus maximus specimen. The second species, Dacosaurus andianensis, was discovered a century later in Argentina's Vaca Muerta formation. Two skulls from this species revealed a distinctive short and tall snout compared to other metrioninchids. Now, Dacosaurus and its relatives had an interesting metabolism. The first crocodilomorphs were like mammals and dinosaurs, producing their own body heat, endothermic. However, most Thalatolutians, including crocodilians, were ectothermic, relying on external sources for heat. Surprisingly, analysis of metrioninchid fossils suggests they had higher and more stable body temperatures, indicating potential endothermy. This allowed Dacosaurus to be more active than crocodilians and other ectothermic thalatosians. Although metrioninchid metabolisms were lower than plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs, their higher metabolism might explain their survival into the Cretaceous period. As global oceanic temperatures fell at the end of the Jurassic period, ectothermic teleosaurs declined. Dacosaurus, with its higher body temperatures, may have been less vulnerable to climate change. Although we're not sure yet, there's speculation that Cretaceous Metrioninchidae, like Dacosaurus and Dionysus, may have evolved even higher metabolisms. So how did they go extinct? Well, the sea crocs, including Dacosaurus, vanished before the end of the early Cretaceous. Since then, other crocodilomorphs have adapted to marine life, but none have embraced the ocean as much as Dacosaurus and its relatives, especially with their unique marine adaptations. The legacy of the real Godzilla lives on, not in crocodiles, but in the mammalian orcas. These marine creatures have taken up the role that Dacosaurus and its relatives once held in the ancient seas. To wrap it up, Dacosaurus, found in Europe and South America, lived for about 20 million years, spanning from the late Jurassic to the early Cretaceous. Despite its crocodilomorph classification, Dacosaurus was pretty freaking different from modern crocodiles. While its body may seem somewhat like a crocodile at first glance, its unique features discussed earlier set it apart. The snout was shorter and taller, its limbs were actually flippers, and the tail resembled that of a shark. Unlike present-day crocodiles, Dacosaurus had a scaleless body and likely spent its life as a fully pelagic reptile, adapted to an oceanic lifestyle. And that's a wrap. If you could travel back in time, would you like to witness the Dacosaurus or the Mosasaurus? Drop your thoughts in the comments below.
And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.